Hello my YouTube friends, welcome back to the channel. Dayton Audio has just released a new line of subwoofers that pair perfectly with their affordable line of tower and bookshelf speakers. And they sent me the largest one from the range to review. The model I have here is the CS1200 and it includes a 12 inch driver, a base reflex cabinet design, and a 200 watt class D amplifier. Today, I'm gonna completely tear this subwoofer down. We're gonna go over the TS parameters of the driver, we're gonna examine the cabinet construction, and then I'm gonna throw the amplifier on the dyno to see if it actually meets its rated power. So let's get started. So what do you actually receive in the box? You get one Dayton Audio CS1200 subwoofer, Mine is finished in walnut, although black is available if you prefer a more understated look. I have always loved wood finishes, so I went with walnut, and I'm impressed by how nice it looks. Here's a shot of the subwoofer next to my Dayton Audio Classic T65 Tower speakers, and you can see the wood tones match perfectly. Also included is a nicely made grill that is made from MDF, a power cord, and an owner's manual. The owner's manual is well written and includes tips on positioning and how to connect the subwoofer to your electronics. This subwoofer uses a base reflex cabinet design with a rear firing port. On the bottom, you'll find soft, pliable rubber feet that do an excellent job of decoupling the subwoofer from the floor and minimizing any unwanted vibrations. The feet are removable, so if you prefer to use spikes instead, you easily can. On the back, you'll find a built-in plate amplifier rated at 200 watts RMS. It offers a full set of controls and connections, stereo RCA line level inputs, plus a dedicated LFE input, phase control switch from zero or 180 degrees, power mode switch on or auto, a volume knob, and adjustable crossover from 40 to 160 hertz. One feature that's becoming rare these days and a real lifesaver for older systems is the inclusion of high level inputs. If your receiver or integrated amplifier lacks a dedicated sub out connection, you can simply connect the sub using speaker wire from the amplifier speaker terminals and the CS1200 will handle the rest. So now I'm going to remove the 12 inch driver. It's held in by eight Phillips head screws. The driver being used in the CS1200 is 12 inches in size and the cone is made from mineral reinforced polypropylene. Typically a mineral reinforced polycone is made from polypropylene mixed with mineral fillers like talc, mica, or wollastonite. This mixture creates a composite material that is stiffer, more rigid, and provides much better damping than plain plastic. The voice coil appears to be one and a half inches in size and Dayton Audio employs several design techniques to ensure effective cooling. One key feature is venting beneath the spider, which helps dissipate heat during intense, high volume movie scenes, such as those dramatic explosions. It's uncommon to see under spider voice coil venting in a subwoofer at this price point. Additional indirect cooling methods include a vented bobbin and a vented pole piece. This additional indirect cooling techniques also give the trapped air behind the dust cap a place to vent during long strokes. The basket is made from stamped steel and the surround is made from butyl rubber. The motor assembly is typical for this price range, measuring 4.75 inches wide by 0.7 inches in height. It also features a bump plate. This is the raised section around the vented pole piece that provides additional clearance for greater excursion. The driver's resonant frequency, also known as FS, is 31.7 Hz, a solid figure for a budget subwoofer. Generally, the lower the resonant frequency, the better the driver performs when reproducing deep, low octave bass notes. Total Q, which tells us how well damped a driver is, came in at 0.7, which is better than what I typically find. Voice coil inductance measured slightly above 2 millihenries, and BL, which measures the strength of the motor assembly, came in at 9.1 tesla meters. Both of these figures are average for what I typically find from subwoofers in this price bracket. 
In my opinion, cabinet construction is above average for this price category. The vinyl walnut wrap gives the subwoofer a more upscale appearance and looks quite nice overall. Regarding build quality, the front baffle, sidewalls, and rear panel are just under 3 quarters of an inch thick. Inside the cabinet, there's a substantial 4 inch wide by 3 quarters of an inch thick brace that ties the two sidewalls together for added rigidity. The port measures 14 inches long by 1.5 inches high by 7 inches wide, and I heard no port noise during my listening sessions. Dayton Audio has also lined the interior walls with 1 inch thick damping material, which helps control resonances effectively. On the bottom of the subwoofer are soft rubber feet that will help decouple the subwoofer from the floor. This is definitely one of the nicer cabinets I have seen from a $300 subwoofer. Port tuning for this subwoofer measured at 26 Hz. There is one cabinet resonance taking place around 200 Hz, which is well above the typical crossover point for most users, so it shouldn't be an issue. The plate amplifier is held in by 14 Phillips head screws. I'm going to remove all these screws so we can remove the plate amplifier and get a closer look at it. Here's the amplifier I removed from my CS1200 subwoofer. It's a Class D design rated at 200 watts RMS. I'll be verifying the power rating with my oscilloscope. The amplifier in the CS1200 appears to be well built, and it must be, given that Dayton Audio offers a 5 year parts and labor warranty. That's the best warranty I've seen yet on a plate amplifier from an affordable subwoofer. Typically, you only get one year, but Dayton Audio is raising the bar and clearly feels confident in their component selection by offering a full 5 year guarantee on the amplifier. I wish more companies followed suit. Dayton Audio rates this amplifier for 200 watts of RMS power. Will it get there? Let's find out. To perform this test, I'll be using my HandTech digital oscilloscope to measure the output of the amplifier. Keep an eye on the RMS voltage because that's what we'll be using to calculate the output of this amplifier. What we are looking for is a clean sine wave with a nice rounded peak. When the amplifier starts to clip, then the peak of the sine wave will flatten out and look like this. Now let's get started with the test. As I increase the input level, the amplifier begins to show signs of clipping once the single ended RMS voltage exceeds 13. Backing it off slightly to just under 13.1 volts per channel gives a clean, undistorted sine wave. Let's calculate the clean output power from there. The two channels measure approximately 13 volts RMS and 12.8 volts RMS. Since this is a bridge tied load configuration, the differential RMS voltage across the load is roughly the sum. 13 plus 12.8 equals 25.8 volts RMS. Power is then calculated as P equals voltage squared divided by R. With a load resistance of 3.5 ohms, I'm getting roughly 190 watts. This represents solid clean power. Depending on the acceptable THD limit, the amplifier can likely deliver right around or just over 200 watts before significant distortion sets in. It's rare to see a budget subwoofer's plate amplifier actually deliver its full rated power, so kudos to Dayton Audio for giving customers every watt that they paid for. If you've watched my previous look inside videos on subwoofers, you are probably familiar with my go-to test the intense intro scene from the Doom DVD. This sequence is absolutely brutal on subwoofers and delivers a thorough workout at low frequencies. For this test, only the subwoofer will be playing. I have already dialed in this subwoofer to achieve maximum clean SPL before the onset of distortion. So let's see what this new Dayton Audio subwoofer is capable of.
102 dB, that's very impressive for a subwoofer that is currently on sale for $240. For comparison, the $399 Polk Monitor XT12 was able to achieve 101 dB, and the $399 Verify Audio Caldera 12 was able to achieve 102 dB during this test. Just for fun, I decided to run one more test, pitting the new Dayton Audio CS1200 against a significantly more expensive competitor, the Heiko Aurora Sub 30A, which carried an original MSRP of $699. Remarkably, in this demanding output test, the CS1200 matched the Heiko's performance blow for blow. During my movie watching sessions, I placed the subwoofer in my upstairs living room to evaluate its performance in a large open space. My living room is part of an open floor plan design with the kitchen, dining room, and living room flowing seamlessly into one another. This combined area measures approximately 850 square feet, and some affordable subwoofers I've tested in the past have struggled to fill this area with sufficient base to meet my expectations. The CS1200, however, handled it effortlessly. The base was strong and authoritative, though it could be a bit peaky at times. This is a common trait among all budget-friendly subwoofers that I have tested. The thing that surprised me most about the CS1200's performance is the output and base authority. Even at high volumes, the CS1200's subwoofer maintained composure and sounded tight and authoritative, which is a rarity for a budget subwoofer to achieve. Next, I popped in my favorite 70s, 80s, and 90s music to see how the CS1200 would perform, and it did a pretty good job here too. The bass was strong, fast, and helped fill in those lower octave bass notes that smaller speakers would otherwise have a hard time achieving. Kick drums and bass guitars sounded fuller, livelier, and filled the room much better than just having my main speakers handle those bass notes. At the time of this video, you can pick up a CS1200 subwoofer for well under $250 on sale, and in my opinion, it offers tremendous value for the money. Not only does the subwoofer look and sound great, but the amplifier actually delivers its rated power, and Dayton Audio also backs it with a full 5-year parts and labor warranty. That's unheard of for a subwoofer this affordable. After analyzing the CS1200 in my series of tests, I would have no problem recommending this subwoofer to family and friends. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the like button. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member. You'll get access to exclusive content and early releases of my videos. And that's my look inside video of the Dayton Audio CS1200 subwoofer. So long, and happy listening!